Hi guys and welcome to my channel. Um, if you've never been, my name is Mackenzie. I am a new mom to a, oh, he's almost 10 month old baby boy. Um, his name is Jace and he's playing at my feet right now. Uh, this is my first time filming a sit down video with Jace awake. And so we'll see how this goes. Let's do a little introduction. This is Jace. <laughs> Take a shoo out. Can you smile at the camera? Jace, look it. Who's that? Who's that handsome boy? <laughs> um, he's a going concern. But he's like the light of my life. Today we're talking about his birth story. I fell in love with YouTube. Um, because I was watching other people's birth vlogs and birth stories and I just going in I wanted to know what I was getting myself into I wanted to know all the ups and downs um, all the risks all the things to look for and that's basically why I wanted to share his birth story with you today um, I have my computer here because I wrote out his birth story shortly after I had him and because it's been 10 months I want to make sure I get everything right um, so if I'm glancing over there that's why but just a little bit of a disclaimer before we get into it my like my birth I guess his birth his birth story is not all sunshine and roses um, it was very scary both my life and his life was at risk but I wanted to share it anyways not to scare you but to inform you I had pretty much almost an every intervention you could have um, and my prenatal class was really good about teaching us about all the different interventions that um, could happen and so I think I was really prepared and so that's why I want to share it with you so uh, let's get right into it so I was due December 9th 2016 and I was huge <laughs> um, I ate whatever I wanted and I didn't exercise a lot but I loved pregnancy like I just had the best pregnancy overall um, I could not ask for anything better everything was normal he was happy he was healthy he was big um, at 37 weeks I was like okay I'm ready to have this baby now and I was like trying to do the nesting thing like every day to hope that maybe he would come because I cleaned the house um, <laughs> that didn't work yeah, everything was completely normal in my pregnancy. There were no concerns, no high blood pressure. Um, I was on the higher side for gestational diabetes, but I was not over where they had to treat me for it. So um, everything was normal. And at, I think it was like my 38 or 39 week appointment, um, they, he was measuring really big and so they wanted to send me for an ultrasound to get a better idea of how, about exactly how big he was um, in case they did have to induce me because he was getting so big. And I went to my ultrasound appointment and everything was fine. Measuring about 8 pounds and they were like, you know, that's fine. We're not concerned. You're good to keep going. Um... By, so December 7th, 2016. So I was having some contractions throughout the day, but I just thought they were Braxton Hicks. <sighs> they weren't super strong or painful, and they were really random, and I'd had them a few days prior to, so it was nothing that really concerned me. Um, went home, and then Matt and I decided to hang out in bed and watch a movie. Um, I actually have a video of us watching a, a movie. We're watching The Jungle Book, and Copper loves to watch TV. And he was watching T 
TV and um, he did not like Shere Khan, the tiger. So he was like barking at the television. So if I can find that clip, I'll insert it. Want to protect him. Um, about 10 minutes after that clip was taken, I just heard this pop and I, like I felt it and I like, I don't know how to explain it, but trust me, you know, when your water breaks, there's just like no doubt about it. Like that was my water. So it was just a pop and I just reached over and I grabbed Matt and I was like, my water just broke. And he's like, are you serious? And I'm like, Yes, and I did not want to have to wash my sheets, okay? This is like my biggest concern. I was like, no, I don't want to wash my sheets. So I literally jumped out of bed so fast. I guess he's leaving. I jumped out of bed so fast and I ran to the washroom. And oh yeah, also another disclaimer is this is going to be TMI, but if you're watching birth stories and birth vlogs, um, I think you're ready for the TMI. So, yeah. So, pull my pants down, sit on the toilet, and it's just like, psh, like a waterfall gushing out of me. And, um, it was so crazy. So, meanwhile, I'm in the washroom, and Matt is, like, calling. I was like, yeah, no, for sure, like, my water broke. So, he's calling my parents. He's calling his parents. Um, I was strep B positive. Um, so I knew that as soon as my water broke, I needed to go to the hospital and get my antibiotics. Um, so I wasn't really having any contractions at all. Everything was fine and wasn't concerned. So I was like, hey, I'm going to jump in the shower, get ready, and then we'll go. Um, so this is at about set, my water broke at like 7.30 at night. And I jumped in the shower, um, got dressed, Matt, Matt was shaving his head, I was plucking my eyebrows, like, I don't know, we were just, we were pretty calm, I think, but I was, like, jittery, like, excited, I wasn't scared, and people asked me this throughout my whole pregnancy, like, are you scared to give birth, are you scared to give birth, and I was like, honestly, no, and I was like, maybe when, I, like, the time comes, I'm gonna be scared, but, like, Whatever happens is gonna happen. And so I didn't really have a strict birth plan. I knew what I wanted, and I wanted to give birth vaginally. Um, but stuff happened. Matt, where are we going? <laughs> to the hospital. <laughs> Why? For <Her> baby. <laughs> so they monitored, monitored me in triage, and I was having contractions like every two minutes, but I didn't feel them. Um, and they were like, I don't know if your pain tolerance is high or whatever. They're like, you don't feel anything. I'm like, no. And um, so I also had meconium. Um, I don't even know like what the saying is, but like <clears throat> meconium is when the baby has a bowel movement. He's gonna distract you guys the whole video. I'm just gonna <laughs> put that out there, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, Maybe we tilt this a little bit. Then he's not in it. Okay. Um, so I had meconium. So meconium is when your baby has a bowel movement inside and it can be harmful to the baby. Kid, that's not a walker. He's so close to walking, guys. And like, this is, his, this is what he does. Finds things that he can push around. Oh my goodness. We'll just leave it. Um, so it can be harmful to the baby. And because I wasn't having contractions yet, they were like, you know, we want to induce you. Um, I was ready to have this baby out, so I didn't really have a problem with induction. In the future, I think I would probably like to avoid induction if possible. It makes your contractions like a lot stronger and a lot harder to manage and I thought I would go longer without getting my epidural but um but they induced me and at 1 a.m um I was only three centimeters dilated and the contractions were 
not debilitating, but they were hard. And I knew I wanted an epidural from the start. I'm just, I don't know, like women that can do it with no epidural, all power to ya. But that was never my plan. I always want an epidural. So that's at 1 a.m. I was like, okay, my nurse was going on her break. So I was like, let's get the epidural first. So I got my epidural and everything was way more comforting. Like what people don't tell you about birth is that when your water breaks, that is the most uncomfortable thing because it doesn't just break once. It's literally like you are like gushing water out of your vagine for until you give birth. Like it is literally, it doesn't stop. It just keeps coming and it's so uncomfortable. Like honestly, I hated that more than I hated the contractions. Um, and so when I got my epidural, I couldn't feel that anymore and it was great. <laughs> so um, the epidural, some people say it'll like stall your labor. It did not. It actually progressed my um, my labor way faster. I think I was relaxed. Um, I was good. They, keep in mind, this entire time I've been in labor, the nurses are literally telling me, you have the happiest, healthiest baby. Like, he's perfect. His heart rate is good. There's no problems. Like, he's just loving life in there. So, um, after I got my epidural, I prog progressed, like, quite a bit. I think I jumped from, like, a three to a six in, like, the span of maybe an hour? Maybe? Like, maybe? I don't know. It went really fast. And, um, and then I kept progressing. I was at an eight at about 6 a.m. Um, yeah, about 6 a.m., his heart rate started to drop and nobody knew what was going on. They had me turning on my side, turning on my other side, like just trying to find a position that made him happy and his heart rate just kept dropping. So they called the doctor in, she came in, she checked me, she said, you are bleeding quite a bit, but like I'm not really concerned. And I had mentioned to my nurse earlier when I went to the bathroom that um, before I got my epidural that I was bleeding quite a bit. And she said, oh yeah, that's normal. And I had read that you would bleed and stuff. So I was like, okay, like whatever. And the doctor um, was like, I don't, let's check your bag of water. Maybe it didn't break fully. So this is one intervention is they take a little, um, I think they, it's like a, it's a little hook and it's on a really long stick and it's like a crochet hook. That's what it is. And so they stick it in and they fish and they try and like pop your bag of water. Um, she did that. She's like, no, your water's completely broken. That's not the issue. So he's still not happy. So they decide we're going to do, we're going to insert an internal fetal monitor. Um, so that's a little thing and it goes into his head. Apparently it doesn't hurt him. Uh, he did have a scar from it when he was born, but it went away at probably after a week or so. Um, and that way they could get a better read on his heart rate. And it was like a no-go. Um, they did it and his heart rate was still really bad. And so they came in, they said, Mackenzie, we're gonna have to do an emergency C-section. I was just overcome with emotion. Um, that's the last thing I wanted was a C-section, but when you're faced with that and your baby's heart rate is declining and stuff like that, you don't even think, you're just like, you just, go into like automatic mode and you're like, okay. And so I started signing the papers and um, they started getting Matt gowned up. As soon as I finished signing those papers, everything moved so quickly. They rushed my bed out the door and they literally like hit my bed against the door. Like they were moving that fast. They wheeled me in into the operating room and Matt can't come in until they make sure everything is sterile and 
they needed to check my epidural. So they were just about to do that and they couldn't find a heart rate. Um, I swear it was like a scene out of a movie. They were like so many people in the room and they were like, we can't find a heart rate. We need to get this baby out now. And just swarm of people everywhere. And I instantly, I felt like just like cut across my stomach. It wasn't like painful, but I could feel it. I swear it was like 10 seconds later, um, he was out and he was crying. And I was a bawling mess at this moment because Matt was not in the room. He was still sit waiting out in the hall for them to let him come in. My mom was with him and I was all by myself and it was so scary. But as soon as I heard him cry, I was like, that's a good sign. Um, and Matt and my mom were in the hallway and they were like, you like, they heard Jace cry and they were like, that can't be our baby. And then Matt like peers into the room and Jace is out and they're wiping him down. And, um, and Matt's like, that is our baby. <laughs> and then things got really bad. Um, I was in so much pain. My epidural was not enough. And I felt like everything. I felt ripping, tugging, pressure, sharp pains. And if you've watched um, like actual C-section birth vlogs, like the mother is like, mm, mm, like feels like kind of movement inside her and like maybe a little bit of tugging but like not pain and that's all I felt was pain I was writhing in pain I was screaming they like strap they were like strapping me down like holding my arms they were like you need to stop moving you stop moving I was like I can't um and they were like we're gonna put you under and so they put the gas mask on me and they're like you're not gonna remember anything I I don't know what happened, but I still remember everything. Um, but the pain went away, which I was so thankful for because it was just awful. So by then, I was so drugged up. Oh my goodness. I was woo, loop de loo. Um, I remember the nurse, she brought me over Jace once. And I got to see him. Um, but I was like, I think that was when I was still kind of kicking in. So I wasn't really aware of what was going on. And then Matt was finally in the room. I don't even know when he came in. But um, eventually he was in the room and he was holding Jay. And he was all awkward holding Jace because he never really, he didn't really hold a lot of babies in his lifetime before Jace. So it was super cute. And me on all the drugs was like, Oh my god, he's the most beautiful baby I've ever seen, and I don't even have to lie. <laughs> Jace Alexander Zaba was born December 8th, 2016. At 7.07 7 a.m., he was 8 pounds, 9 ounces, and 20 and a half inches long. He was perfect. He was perfect, happy, healthy. And we were just so blessed. Um, we didn't know what happened. It's okay. We didn't know what ha the reason for my C-section until quite a bit later on after I delivered him. Um, but I had placental abruption. So placental abruption is super rare. Um, it's like a 1% chance. Placental eruption is when the placenta detaches before you give birth and it's not supposed to do that. So there's a lot of bleeding and essentially the baby's not getting any nutrients or oxygen um, while they're still inside you. It's very dangerous, can be fatal both to mom and baby. And I am so thankful that I had the best team of doctors. Um, 
ready. I don't want to discourage um, home births um, because I think they're, I, I think they're very magical and I think they can be amazing. But I know that if I was at home having him, I don't think we would have had the same outcome. I, I don't know where either one of us would be and that's just that's just the reality and I mean it what I had was so rare you don't even think about it and I had a perfect pregnancy that they honestly they don't know why it happened um they can't give me any answers they still can't and when I went into the operating room I was 10 centimeters dilated so I was actually ready to have him which sucks that I was so close but um, you have to I had to do what was best for us and so this is what was best and I'm glad um, but I was told that for future pregnancies um, I should be able to have a successful VBAC, which is a vaginal birth after cesarean because I was 10 centimeters dilated with him. And my risk for having placental abruption again is very low. Um, I've actually read some things online saying that if you've had it before, like you're more likely to have it again, but my doctor said that's false. So I don't know. That is what it is. But I'm just happy that we're healthy and it wasn't the perfect birth. Excuse me. It wasn't. Look it. Um, it wasn't the perfect birth, but it's our birth story and I'm, I'm just happy. Okay, he's not happy, um, but I'm happy. So it's okay. So I just want to thank you guys for watching. Um, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Um, we do vlogs and I want to start doing more sit down videos. So subscribe if you want to see more. And hopefully he won't be cranky next time. <laughs> um, thanks guys. See you next time.